Hi everyone, it's Anna once again. So after my previous video, where was I? Eh? Eh? Children, remain calm. The Falkland Islands have just been invaded. I repeat, the Falklands have just been invaded. The disputed islands lie here, off the coast of Argentina. Oh yeah. Well, let's get back on track. At the end of episode 1, we saw how Argentina occupied the islands and how the UK received the news in total shock. Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, was facing reduced popularity levels because of her economic policies, so she needed to win the war to regain her popularity. At the House of Commons, approval was given to form a task force to retake the islands. The government has now decided that a large task force will sail as soon as all preparations are complete. HMS Invincible will be in the lead and will leave port on Monday. First, she tried with Yonu to force Argentina to leave the islands. This was achieved with Resolution 502, giving England the moral high ground. The UK had the support of the Commonwealth and the European Economic Union, so strong sanctions were imposed on Argentina. Portugal, the oldest ally of England, immediately allowed the British to use the Azores Islands to refill their planes and ships. Many of the weapons provided by the Americans were carried through there. New Zealand allowed the British to use one of their own ships, Canterbury, to release a Royal Navy vessel for the Falklands. The French stopped the sales of weapons to Argentina, including exosets, and trained British Harrier pilots against their Mirage planes to learn how to fight them. The main problem was the US. The United States was the main ally of both the UK and Argentina, and they wanted to keep good relations with South American countries at all costs, by defending anti-colonial activities. Something that the British were kinda trying to do? US Secretary of State Alexander Haig wanted Reagan to side with Argentina, but uh, Thatcher managed to convince the Americans to support her during the war. With American support secured, the British sent the task force to retake the islands. British military operations in the Falklands were given the code name Operation Corporate. This is my model of the HMS Invincible aircraft carrier that I made with Lego bricks. On the front, we can see the Sea Dart missile launcher, the radar, we can see some helicopters on the flight deck, 20mm over Likens over there, and on the rear, we have some Harrier fighters, some Sea Harriers, and some Gear 3 Harriers from the RAF. And this model also features a hangar to store the planes. The hangar starts roughly around here and it goes all the way until here, I think. And these parts of the flight deck can be removed to put more planes on the hangar if needed. It's roughly one meter long and it's the model that I made. Gautier also got ready for the war. Si quieren venir, que vengan, le presentaremos batalla! A new governor for the Malvinas was appointed, Brigadier General Menendez. Almost all South American nations helped Argentina. Peru donated mirages for the Air Force, and even Fidel and Gaddafi supported Argentina. Venezuela and Guatemala volunteered to send troops to the islands, and there was also rumors that the Soviet Union passed satellite information about the British ship positions to the Argentinians. But there was one South American nation that, crucially, didn't help Argentina. Remember on my first video when I said that Fidel tried to invade a neighbor nation? Well, that nation happened to be Chile, ruled by the not very friendly dictator Augusto Pinochet. The Chileans decided that it was time to get their revenge, so they strongly supported England during the war, namely with intelligence information and early warning on Argentinian aerial movements, giving the British extra time to deploy their harriers to intercept the attackers. Some reports also say that the Chile allowed the UK to use Chilean bases to operate Canberra reconnaissance planes with Chilean markings from there, and even Nimrod oceanic patrol planes. Nimrods also performed patrol flights near the islands, being refueled by Victor tankers operating from the Ascension Islands. This is my Nimrod oceanic patrol plane uh, made with Lego bricks. We can see that it's made in Dart 10. 
and it features the Sidewinder missiles under the wings, as well as the LED light here to hunt submarines during the night. This mod also has the refueling probe here, as well as the large bomb bay here that uh, allows the installation of torpedoes, bombs and many other weapons that the Nimrods use during the war. Chile adopted a very aggressive position, so Argentina was forced to deploy to the border most of their best mountain troops, leaving the islands to be defended by mostly conscripts hastily trained from subtropical regions of Argentina. The British, however, sent elite units for the invasion, including mountain troops, marines, paratroopers, commandos, SIS and the best soldiers in the world, the Gurkhas, armed with their deadly Kukris. When the task force departed, the entire event was widely shown on television. The idea was that the show of strength would have been enough to force the Argentinians to retreat. Newsweek and Time magazine made these famous covers for their magazines. A total of 127 ships comprised this fleet, 43 Royal Navy vessels, 22 auxiliary ships and 62 cargo ships, including the Ocean Lions, Canberra and even the Kiwi 2, which were uh, modified to transport troops for the war. The British only had 42 Harriers available, 28 Sea Harriers and 14 RAF Gear 3s, and no airborne early warning and control aircraft against the powerful Argentinian Air Force with more than 170 combat planes. The A4 Skyhawk was the most important attack plane of the Argentinian Air Force. It was used by both the Argentinian Air Force and the naval aviation. The plane that I made is the naval variant of the A4 Skyhawk that operated from the Argentinian aircraft carrier Vinte Cinco de Mayo. We can see that this model features the 20mm autocannons under the wings, on the wing roots. We can see that it has two drop tanks, as well as a large bomb here, as well as the tail hook to land on the carriers. It also has the air brakes here on the tail and a refueling probe on this side to be air refueled from the KC-130 Hercules. On 12th of April, the UK imposed a 200 mile maritime exclusion zone around the islands. This means that any vessel or plane from any country entering the area may be fired upon. On 23 of April, the British clarified that any Argentinian ship or aircraft that was considered a threat to the British forces anywhere in the South Atlantic would be attacked. Exclusion zones are historically declared for the benefit of neutral vessels. During war, under international law, the heading and location of a belligerent naval vessel has no bearing on its status. Between the time of the arrival of the fleet to the combat area, both nations got ready for the war. There was some discussions to bring the peace to the table promoted by Peru, but they failed. On 23 of April, the British invaded the South Georgia Islands, but were forced to cancel the attack after they lost two helicopters due fog. On 25 of April, the Argentinian submarine Santa Fe was spotted on the surface and attacked by helicopters with missiles, step charges and torpedoes that caused extensive damage, forcing the Argentinians to abandon the ship. That sure was a tough submarine to kill. Shortly after, on 26, South Georgia Islands was back in British hands. Behind me, we have one anti-submarine uh, wasp helicopter. This one belonged to HMS Endurance, which was one of the ships that took part on the Falklands War. And uh, it's amazing that they still keep the plane in good shape here. On 1st of May, British military operations on the Falklands started with an air attack made by a Vulcan strategic bomber against Port Stanley's airfield. The next day, Harriers conducted a series of air raids against the island for the first time. Now, the Argentinians knew that the task force was close. The British were coming. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more details about these LEGO models that I made, please visit my Flickr page. Thank you and see you next time.